A while ago I posted a video where I ranked all of Ash Ketchum's Pokemon from worst to best. Personally, it's one of my favorite videos, and it seemed like you guys liked it too. I'd go as far as to say that video is flawless. Noctowl is a good battler, and also Ash is only Psychic type. Okay, I get it. I'm dumb. Also, due to copyrighted clips being removed, that video has a couple cuts that feel kind of abrupt. So really, I guess it isn't flawless. Not even close. But back then, I was judging each Pokemon individually. That doesn't really reflect how the team was as a whole. For this list, I'm mainly looking at each team's overall strength and diversity. I saw this idea on a comment, but of course I can't find the comment now, so shout out to whoever suggested it. I'm sorry. I'll be including Ash's teams from all regions, as well as the Orange Islands. Which brings our total number up to 8, so I guess I can't call this a top 10 list. Yeah, I'm not including the newer movie version of Ash, since his team consisted of, like, 3 Pokemon. And he released Butterfree, and then in Power of Us, Charizard was gone as well. It just wouldn't make any sense to include this team. Also, no Electric Tale of Pikachu manga either. We're sticking to mainline anime Ash only. But without further ado, let's get into it. Here are all of Ash Ketchum's teams, ranked from worst to best. Ash's Unova Team. How do I say this in the best way possible? This team didn't really feel like a team. There were 10 Pokemon total, and most were pretty boring. It felt less like Ash was trying to create a competent team, and more like, hey, remember this Pokemon Ash caught 30 episodes ago but never used? This Pokemon's cool, right? Boy, doesn't everyone sure love this Pokemon? Now, there were some decent Pokemon on this team, like Crocodile and, uh, Crocodile. I guess Big Knight was kind of alright, but that's only compared to the rest of the team. It was still basically Infernape Blight. No wonder Ash lost to the worst trainer in the league even when Cameron only brought five Pokemon. You know, maybe Ash was just a dumbass in Unova. Ash's Hoenn team. This team definitely has type diversity, but it's still one of Ash's weakest offerings. I mean, it really says something when Corphish is the Pokemon with the highest win percentage. And while Swellow was alright, it wasn't nearly as cool of a Pokemon as some of the birds to come. But what really brings this team down is Torkoal, who has to be one of the worst Pokemon Ash has ever caught. And before you comment that Sceptile defeated Darkrai, that came much later in the Sinnoh League. The thing didn't even evolve until after the Hoenn League. And speaking of which, this team brought Ash to the top 8 of the Hoenn League's Evergrade Conference, before losing to Tyson. However, Pikachu and Swellow basically carried that whole battle. It was cool that Ash brought Fampy back, later evolving into Donphan, but by that point the series was almost over, and Ash switched to other teams often in the battle frontier. Ash's Kanto Team Ah yes, the team that started it all, Ash's original team. Kinda sucks if I'm being completely honest. After releasing Butterfree and getting scammed out of Primeape, Ash only ever used 5 Pokemon. Probably because his 6th spot was being filled by his strongest Pokemon, Jelly-Filled Donut. And that would be fine and all, but Charizard wouldn't listen to him, and Pidgeotto literally never won a single battle. So really it was more like 3 Pokemon. And Ash had extra Pokemon waiting at the lab, but he didn't use any of them until the Indigo League. Oh yeah, the Indigo League. The only Pokemon that really knocked out of the park were Kingler and Muck. You know, the two they left at Oak's lab. Really says something about Ash's skills as a trainer in these early episodes. And to have it all end with a sleeping Charizard, this team was just a mess. Ash's Johto Team this team wasn't especially strong, but it definitely had personality. All three starters were distinct from one another, and their personalities worked off each other really well. Chikorita slash Bayleaf was adorable, always wanting a hug. Cyndaquil was a really interesting fighter, as it took time in battle for its flame to fully ignite. And Totodile's dances never failed to put a smile on my face. And while Squirtle and Charizard went off to training, Bulbasaur got to stick around, which was pretty cool. Now aside from being shiny, Noctowl wasn't the most interesting bird. But it was super cool to see Ash own a psychic type. <laughs> Whoa, that was weird, but I've learned my lesson now. Wait, what type was Noctowl? Ash's Orange Island Team I think one of the anime's writers looked at Ash's original team and said, well, this is embarrassing. Let's fix it. And boy, did they fix it. Ash released Pidgeot and replaced it with another Pokemon who never won a battle. Honestly though, Ash kinda needed a Lapras for this journey because, well, you know, he needed a boat. But Snorlax was an awesome addition to the team. Now we all know about how Snorlax somehow knew six moves at one point, but even ignoring that, it was still an awesome Pokemon. Also, I'm just learning now from Bulbapedia that it knew five moves at one point in the Ash and Pikachu manga, so I guess it's just common practice for Snorlax. I hadn't even heard of this manga, so I checked to see if they made an English version. Apparently they did, but it was only ever released in Singapore. So that everyone watching this in Singapore, is the manga any good? Anyway, it was on this team that Charizard finally started listening to Ash and became one of his best Pokemon. The Orange Islands took what Ash had started in Kanto and nearly perfected it. 
So I wrote and recorded this a while ago, like pre-Ash winning the league a while ago. Originally, I didn't put the Alola team this high up, but things have definitely changed for the better. In just a few episodes, I feel like this has went from one of Ash's worst teams to one of his best. Like, what is there really to say about this team? It just rocks. I love how so many Pokemon were able to win meaningful battles, even with all odds being against them. Ash's Lycanroc defeated Gladian's Lycanroc, the Pokemon it always looked up to. Tauracat beat Kakui's Incineroar, causing it to evolve, and, uh, also knocking itself out in the process. Rowlet beat House Decidueye, with style of course. And yes, Pikachu finally managed to defeat Tapu Koko in an incredible clash of Z-moves, in which Ash was able to Kamehameha his way to victory. I only feel this team lacked a real MVP, something the next two teams definitely have. Nevertheless, Ash's Alolan team was truly spectacular. Ash's Kalos team. Literally Ash Greninja. Okay, but for real, Ash's Kalos team may have been relatively small, but man was it powerful. This team brought so much that it's no wonder Ash made it to the league finals. Hallucha has a burning passion for battles, with a good mix of both strength and speed. Talonflame's fire typing makes it Ash's most unique and arguably strongest bird. Gudra, while not seeing much screen time, was a complete powerhouse and Greninja's Battle Bond made it without a doubt Ash's most powerful Pokemon. Something about the way Greninja moved and how quick its attacks were made it an absolute blast to watch. This team could have easily been number one, but there is one major flaw holding it back, a true lack of diversity. The team contained two Dragon types and three Flying types, which was a bit excessive. I still don't understand why Ash was given a Noivern when it didn't introduce any new types to the team, and Noivern was easily the team's worst member, losing nearly all of its battles. Don't get me wrong, I like Noivern, I think it's an awesome Pokemon, but I would much rather have seen Ash owns something like a Go-Goat or Aegislash. However, this team will definitely be remembered fondly. And of course, Ash's best team in my opinion is the Sinnoh team. If you watch my other video on Ash's Pokemon, you probably saw this one coming. Honestly, I kept going back and forth between Sinnoh and Kalos, but the team's diversity in Sinnoh gave it a slight edge. All of Ash's Pokemon feel like they were specifically picked to balance out the team, and I love all of them. We've got Torterra having to change its battle style after evolving from Turtwig, Weasel being traded from Dawn to Ash due to its love of battles, Star after being an incredibly competent and powerful flying type, Gliscor struggling to become stronger, even going as far as to leave Ash to train with an air battle master, and of course, Infernape being released by Paul before Ash took it in. I love how Ash specifically used this team in his final battle against Paul, despite having access to all of his other Pokemon. Ash knew this team wanted to win the battle just as much as he did. Oh, and how could we forget Gibble? Everyone loves Gibble. I don't know why the writers chose to give Ash Gibble so late into his Sinnoh journey, but hey, I'm not complaining. So those are my thoughts on all of Ash's teams ranked from worst to best. This was a hard list to make, as you could pretty much interchange any of the top three. As always, be sure to post your thoughts on Ash's various teams in the comments. Now if you'll excuse me, I'll be counting down the seconds until the new series premieres. You've probably noticed the upgrade in the art quality with my character, and that's because I'm not the one drawing it anymore. So I want to give a big shout out to my artist Kealia, who you can follow at Kealia Official on Instagram, link in the description. Her art's incredible, and I am honored that she wanted to work with me. And speaking of art, I got some amazing fan art recently from Twitter user at Seibner2. She also has a YouTube channel where she makes animation memes and speed paints, which I've linked in the description. Thank you so much for watching, and I can't believe Gen 8 is only days away. We're almost there, guys.